I'm finally gonna win one. I just know it. Hey everybody, it's Winter Picks Dinner Ho Ho Holiday Edition. We are at Walt Disney World in December, gonna travel around the Monorail Resorts for a competitive five course meal. Yeah. I feel good, I feel good. I'm gonna win at least one this time. Yeah. At least one. A game. A game is the foot. A game is the foot. A game is the foot. <laughs> the way the game works is simple. We are going to have a five course meal and each of those courses will be decided by the winner of a round of rock, paper, scissors. Now it's important to be strategic if you win that course because once a location has been chosen, it cannot be used again. And there's a lot of great places to get eats, drinks, holiday fun, so you're going to want to choose wisely. On this holiday edition of Winter Picks Dinner, we are going to be going to all of the Monterey Resorts. Now that includes the Contemporary Resort, the Polynesian Resort, and the Grand Floridian Resort. But we are starting here at the Contemporary Resort. Maybe, depending on who wins the first round of Winter Picks Dinner. All right, it's the holidays. I've been practicing. You can't practice this game, but I'm ready. My record is terrible, but I got this. You got this. Yeah. You got this. I got it. You got this. I got it. I have faith in you. Yeah. On shoot. Yeah. Are you ready? Yes. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay, nice. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Rock, Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yes! You won! We're going to Cali Grill. If you've watched the other episodes of this, you know I am truly terrible at rock, paper, scissors. I don't know how because it's a game that requires no skill and all guessing. I guess terribly, but things are off to a great start. Now there's a lot of great places to grab drinks around the monorail line here at the Contemporary. And we're going to hope to get into Cali Grill, which is up on the top floor, overlook the Magic Kingdom. You could also go to Steakhouse 71 Lounge. You could go to the Outer Rim. Polynesian, of course, you've got Trader Sam's Tambu Lounge over at Grand Floridian. You've got Enchanted Rose. So lots of great places to get drinks. But I'm hopeful we can get into the, uh, Cali Grill. Welcome inside Disney's Contemporary Resort. This is one of the oldest Walt Disney World resorts being an opening day hotel, but it has gotten some updates for the 50th anniversary. You will see this beautiful artwork here in the main check-in lobby area. It's Mary Blair inspired. She also did the beautiful mural up on the fourth floor concourse. If you're not familiar with Mary Blair, she was the main artist behind It's a Small World. Ooh, 50th anniversary gingerbread. I do think we'll check that out. The Contemporary, like all the hotels on the Monorail, are deluxe resorts, meaning they are some of the most expensive, uh, primarily due to their location on the Monorail and being so close to Magic Kingdom. They are also some of the most popular and have some of the best dining in all of Walt Disney World. Terrible news. My uh, success and joy was cut short because despite arriving at California Grill when they opened, um, there aren't any more bar stools. Some people beat us to it. There's only 15 bar stools and it's first come first serve. So get here early if you want to go to Cali Grill for drinks. Um, so we are instead going to go to the Outer Rim, which is the lounge here on the fourth floor concourse at the Contemporary, the legendary Mary Blair mural right there, the monorail going by. Welcome to the Outer Rim. This is again the lounge right here on the fourth floor of the Contemporary. You still get a beautiful view out looking at Bay Lake and Seven Seas Lagoon. Now the Outer Rim is not my favorite lounge. I'm going to be honest with you. I think it generally has the generic Disney Resort bar menu that doesn't have a lot of specialty things on it. And of course they can make you whatever you want, but it's just not my favorite. I don't love the ambiance as much, but we are doing a holiday monorail crawl and I know that they are having this little beauty, this is a specialty beverage. You know I love an old-fashioned. I love the holidays. Look at that jingle ball. Obviously a great first choice. As I said, the menu here at Outer Rim is very much the classic Disney cocktail menu where you've got a variety of margaritas. You've got some Disney resort staples such as the Magical Star cocktail. You've got some sangrias, the chocolate martini. They do have the 50th anniversary Magical Beacon. They do have a bourbon flight. That's interesting. A little something new. And then a selection of wine and beer. If there's one thing that could cure my sorrows of not being able to go to California Girl right now, it is a holiday-themed old-fashioned, especially one with a Mickey-shaped jingle belt glow cube just sadly sunk to the bottom like my dreams of going to California Grill. I'm going to get it out there to show you because it's really cute. Oh, no, this is not working. Alan, can you, can you help me? Save him. Oh, no. Bring up an ear. You got him. 
All right, look how cute this Jingle Bell is. Now, you can always ask for Jingle Bells um, in addition to cocktails that don't have them, or glow cubes, or you can ask for them to be taken out if you want to save a few dollars. But look, he's green right now, and then he can become blue, yellow, pink, teal, gold, red. Oh, this one's multicolor. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. Okay, this is joyous. I'm thrilled right now. But you probably care to know what's in the cocktail, not just the cute glow cube. It is Buffalo Trace Kentucky Bourbon, Roseberry, Cranberry, Lime, and Cinnamon, which is very adorable. And then a shocking twist to no one, I got the bourbon flight. On the left here, we have the Larceny Kentucky Straight. In the middle, we have Knob Creek Disney Select Single Barrel. And on the right, Buffalo Trace Kentucky Straight. I'm excited to try all of these. They're very different types of whiskey and I'm looking forward to putting my palate to the test. The lighting in here makes me look like a ghost. Cheers. Ooh, that is delightful. Now, I was worried with the addition of some of those fruit flavors that it would make it too sweet, but because of the lime, it's got a little bit of tart. I can taste the cranberry as well, adding a little bit of tartness, a little bit of sweetness, that nice sweet bourbon. You can still taste that it's bourbon, but it's not burning the back of my throat. I will say I don't taste the cinnamon, and I wish I could taste the cinnamon a little bit more, but overall this is a really good old-fashioned with a slight holiday twist and a cute glow cube, so I'm not mad. <sighs> Tastes like victory. What? Yep, yeah, because I won. I saved you the trouble of having to watch me smell all of these like I know what I'm talking about. Cheers. That first one was the worst thing. It was a more highly weeded whiskey. You can certainly taste it. It's a muted spice, but still pretty spicy, more than your standard bourbon. Very tasty. Next up is the Knob Creek Disney Barrel Reserve. Heavy caramel notes. Really sweet. A lot of wood flavor, but not spicy at all. Ooh, that might be my favorite. And this is Buffalo Trace which is rye, which means it is going to be spicier. And wow, is it? Really heavy notes of cinnamon. Very, very good. The Knob Creek takes it, though. Okay, we had delicious holiday cocktails. I won one. You did. Let's do the second one. I want news. All right, that's fair. Hey, I've got a heat feeling. Ready? For me? For you, yes. Ready? Ready. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Nudes. In order to get the most delicious nudes from Disney's Polynesian Village, well, that means it's our first trek onto the monorail. Much like the contemporary, the Polynesian is an opening day resort. It is my personal favorite resort because I just love the vibe here. It is known for Ohana, which is one of its most popular eating locations. It also has Kona, Captain Hook's, Trader Sam's, as well as where I imagine we're going, which is the Tambu Lounge. That's right. With my second victory of the night, we are headed to the Tambu Lounge, which is the bar next to Ohana. Tambu Lounge is known for a variety of beverages. They have some of the same ones we saw at Outer Rim, as well as some specific Polynesian things like the Lapu Lapu, which is the cocktail inside a pineapple. Now, taking a look at the Tambu Lounge drink menu, as I said, there are some Polynesian favorites. The back scratcher has been on the menu since 1971. It comes with a literal back scratcher. You've also got that Lapu Lapu. That's the one served inside of a pineapple. There is a Hawaiian mule that I quite enjoy. And then the majority of the rest of the menu is more of that classic Disney bar menu. You also have a food menu, and you've got things like California rolls, some wings, pot stickers. But if you know what you're doing, you can get these Ohana favorites. And of course, that's what I picked. These are the iconic Ohana nudes, the teriyaki noodles. These are also the Ohana wings, not the wings listed on the menu. You can ask for those specifically. You can also get the Ohana pot stickers and bread pudding if you want to complete the feast. The Ohana noodles are legendary. They're so delicious. They're teriyaki noodles, so they're slightly sweet. They remind me a little bit of a lo mein noodle. They've also got some onion in there. They are just absolutely fabulous. Nice and peppery, like slightly sweet, smooth noodle. They're one of my absolute favorite Disney foods, and I'm so glad you can get them without having to try and snag a reservation to Ohana, because that can be tricky. The wings are incredible as always. 
they're sticky, but not super sweet. Not an overt MSG flavor, but the best part is that they are moist. A lot of these are mashed boost or dry. Not here. We have delicious noodles. Tambu Lounge, fantastic. I am going to tell you something that you might not want to hear. You can't get red pudding now. I not thought of that. But, worth it. All right, entrees. Indeed. Bakehouse 71 burger, I want to eat you. All right. Ready? Rock, Rock paper, scissors, shoot. Look at you. Are you letting me win? What is happening? How? How could I let you win? Well, with my win in entrees, that means we're headed back to exactly where we just were, the contemporary. Back at the contemporary resort for my choice of entree, and what a magical monorail ride it was because the Magic Kingdom fireworks started going off while we were on the monorail. So that was a nice magical touch. And now we're going to go eat the most magical burger on earth. Sorry, I got distracted by the neon Mickey wall on the side of Buena Vista Gifts right here at the Contemporary. A very good selfie wall if you need one. Anyway, we are headed down to floor one of the Contemporary, the main check-in lobby area for Steakhouse 71. Of course, there are tons of great places to get entrees on the monorail loop, many of which require reservations, which we do not have since we didn't know who was going to win. Um, but you could go to Ohana at the Polynesian. You could also go to Kona Cafe at the Polynesian. You've got Chef Mickey's here, Narcuzzi's or Citrico's signature restaurants at the Great Floridian, Victorian Albert's, of course, the fanciest restaurant in Walt Disney World, California Grill here up top the Contemporary, lots and lots of great dining along the loop but we're headed to one of my faves. Steakhouse 71 used to be the wave of American flavors, which closed last year and reopened for the 50th anniversary. And it's a nod to 1971 when the Contemporary and Walt Disney World opened. You'll see some classic items on the menu, things that were Walt's favorite, things that were opening day eats. But my favorite thing about this restaurant is this wall right here when you walk in, pictures of Walt and Roy and the Imagineers building and designing Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World. Here's John Hentry right here. He's the architect behind Cinderella castle and space mountain here's one of my favorite imagineers harriet burns she was the first female imagineer she's the one who made animatronics breathe you've got pictures of the monorail the contemporary you've got roy disney walt disney's brother right here on main street usa with mickey and the gang it's just you've got roy doing the dedication right here with mickey who he called forward to represent his brother walt i could cry looking at these pictures but instead let's get some food Steakhouse 71 has become incredibly popular for lunch and dinner, partly because it's a perfect way to escape from Magic Kingdom for a little bit, come have a really good meal at a really good price, and then go back to the parks. So if you want to sit down, I recommend grabbing a reservation. They do also have, or have this lounge area, which is first come, first serve. You can't order off the full menu, but they've got bites and burgers, as well as all their amazing cocktails. Here at the Steakhouse 71 Lounge, they have a variety of house-made cocktails. I'm particularly interested in the Fig Manhattan. If I were to have a second choice, it would likely be the Coco Belvedere, mainly because... Boulevardier. Yes, the Boulevardier. Coco Boulevardier. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. Uh-huh. Anyway, you could also get the French 71 or the 1971 Sunset. If you'll notice those two year, uh, numbers, 71 and 1971, indicating the year that Walt Disney World, the Magic Kingdom, opened. The Lounge Bites is a limited menu, but what they do have listed is incredible. I think I am particularly interested in that stack burger and the onion rings. But if I, uh, if I had a hankering for some breakfast food, a la Ron Swanson, I'd go with the bacon and eggs. Wait, wait. I worry what you just heard was, give me a lot of bacon and eggs. What I said was, give me all the bacon and eggs you have. Just because we're getting entrees doesn't mean we can't have drinks. They have two specialty holiday beverages. Mine is a holiday spin on eggnog. It has half and half a spiced holiday simple syrup, cavassier, which is a cognac. And finally, topped with some nutmeg and a little bit of orange zest. And I am now turning this into a holiday old-fashioned ranking, as well as a winter pick dinner, because I got their holiday old-fashioned, which is rosemary. It's got a Buffalo Trace bourbon, a rosemary simple syrup, and then it's garnished with a sprig of rosemary on top there, a little bit of soda water. Very excited about this one. 
Ooh, that one is lovely. Now it comes again with the cute little Mickey Glow Cube. We're gonna have a whole fleet of these for our bar by the time I'm done with this video. Very good old fashioned. It's a little bit sweeter than I expected with it being advertised as rosemary, but you can taste that herbaceousness from the rosemary, which I love. And I love smelling it because of the sprig there. Really gets your nose going. Really is a lovely holiday beverage. I do think I like the one over at the Contemporary. Wait, we're still at the Contemporary. Just been around the loop. I like the one higher on the contemporary, even though this one has cranberry as well. Um, I thought I'd like this one more because of the rosemary, but I actually am uh, preferring that one because of the cinnamon. Hey, where are we? Apparently the contemporary. Correct. Uh, I have to be honest with you, normally I don't go for yeah. sort of milk-based beverages, but this is a lot lighter than I anticipated. Really nice flavors of cinnamon, anise, and some uh, clove as well as nutmeg, and the cognac. A little bit of a bite on the end. Overall, big fan. The food is here and we have got a smorgasbord of deliciousness. First things first, the best burger in Walt Disney World, IMO. This is the Steakhouse 71 Stack Burger. It's a signature blend of beef. It's got pork belly on top, American cheese, a lemon aioli, red onion, house-made pickles on a brioche bun. Oh my gosh, I've been dreaming about this burger for weeks, y'all. Plus we got this cute little basket full of Parmesan fries. We're going to share all of this. So we also grabbed the loaded mac and cheese that comes with smoked bacon and jalapenos. And then also the Steakhouse 71 onion rings, which are hand breaded with spicy ranch. And as a little point out, this is actually plant-based. So if you're a plant-based eater, you can have that ranch or you can ask for that ranch to go on the side of other things at the restaurant. You know when you've dreamt about a food for so long and then you finally get it again and your expectations are so high and you eat it again and you're like, that didn't meet my expectations. That is not what happens here because oh my gosh, this burger is so good. I've never found a better burger in Walt Disney World. It's that nice thin patty, like diner style. It's got gooey American cheese, that little crispness from the pickles and the red onion, a little tartness from the lemon aioli, or a little zip from the lemon aioli. Really meaty, juicy, delicious pork belly on there too. The bun is perfection. You, I'm not kidding, you will not find a better burger in Disney World. So I have two major fears when it comes to onion rings. One is that they're going to be soggy because the onion holds a lot of moisture. So if fried too long, it tends to get soggy. Not an issue. Two, greasy, because if it's left in the fry over too long, too greasy. Neither of those are issues here. They're crunchy, delicious, and have strong flavor of onion. And the sauce is incredible. Zesty, tangy, a little bit of spice in the end. I'm ordering more sauce for my fries. Wise choice. Mac and cheese. The noodles are cooked very well, and I love the zest. The little bit of little bit of heat from the jalapeno, the saltiness from the bacon. I like the little breadcrumb on top. My one complaint about this mac and cheese: it's not cheesy enough. It looks like it's gonna be, but they use some really mild cheeses in there. When I eat gourmet mac and cheese, I want something to punch me in the face a little bit. I want a really sharp cheddar. I want a sweet tuna. I want something that's a little bit more unique than that. So while I don't think it's bad mac and cheese, and you are able to get the unloaded mac and cheese if you'd like something a little simpler. For me, the burgers, without a doubt, the best thing uh, here, and I would probably skip the mac and cheese. A delicious, delicious burger. Sure. I'm still doing well today, so far. Well, listen, even if you lose, you're winning. That's true, that is the nature of this game, but I'm actually winning this time, which is what's important. Dessert. I don't have a lot of steaks in this now that I can't get bread pudding. I guess I can go to Kona and put it in. Right, ready? Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Look at that. I wanted a perfect game, but I'll take one of that too. Well, we can't pick bread pudding, which is a real bummer. To be fair, we could go to Kona and get Kona to go bread pudding. Or... You have a better idea than bread pudding? Yeah, well, they have all those cool gingerbread houses and cookies out. She's in Oh, that's nice. This yeah. is a holiday monorail crawl. It is. Cookies. Cookies. I just checked the time, and it would seem that the Grand Floridian gingerbread house is closed right now. Well, but the well, contemporary is not. Well, the cookie part. Well, the, yeah. The, they, yeah. They don't close the gingerbread house. You gonna break in? I'm gonna break in. I am gonna be the old witch from Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> break into the candy house. One more time? No, isn't that the story of Hansel and Gretel? Isn't it like a, there's like candy and there's a witch? Yes, but the children break into her house. But is her house made of candy? Why is there candy and a witch? No, you got the right story. I just like 
the kids com- the kids commit a B and E. And then she wants to put them in her oven. Well, they is, commit a B and E. Like, are you suggesting that the kids deserve it? They committed. I don't know the laws of her nation. First of all, and they committed a crime. You're saying that a, a simple B and E is penalty. A simple B and E. I don't know what a felony B and E is. I'm sure that kids would get off. I don't know that they need to get murdered. I'm learning a lot right now. As we approach the beautiful gingerbread display here in the Contemporary Resort, it is worth noting that the Grand Floridian and the Contemporary both have distinctly different gingerbread recipes. In fact, any resort that does have a gingerbread display will have a unique recipe dedicated to that resort. So, if you're looking to try those different items, you will actually have a unique experience every time you go get one. Look how absolutely stunning it is. I am always amazed by these creations by the bakery team. This one was led by uh, Chef Jeff Barnes and it's, it's gingerbread. It's all flour and sugar and eggs and it becomes these incredible gigantic creations. This is the 11th year of them doing the gingerbread here at the Contemporary Resort. So they hid 11 five-legged goats which is a Disney thing. There's a five-legged goat in the Large Mary Blair mural. It, it's kind of one of those Disney things that people know about that are big fans of Disney. Um, so you can look for the 11 five-legged goats. You can also see that the backdrop here behind the castle is designed after Mary Blair's Small World facade. So you've got the Small World smile right there. And uh, you've got gingerbreads and Mickeys. And it's just... Checking out the holiday decorations is definitely one of my favorite things to do at Disney this time of year. I do want to highlight that they have an array of treats you can get at the gingerbread displays. We've got a gingerbread right here. I love the fact that there's a five-legged goat cookie. Um, There is a box of different cookies. You can make your own gingerbread house with this kit. There's some peppermint bark, different cookies, and oh my gosh, how cute is this mug? It's got Fairy Godmother on it. And then gingerbread display and Jack and Gus Gus. And look, the back is so you can put your cookie. You can put your little cookie right there and you can have your mug of your cocoa. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. Look at the contemporary gingerbread kit. It's like a gingerbread house, but a contemporary. Look at the monorails. It's a little chocolate monorail. This is so cute. This would be a very fun take home and project. In honor of Mary Blair and the five-legged goat, of which there are 11 hidden on this gorgeous gingerbread castle display. I have gotten us a five-legged goat cookie. I could not be more thrilled. Thank you, Vanna. I could not be... You know what? I'm not going to even lie. I didn't even check. I just saw the five-legged goat and I bought it. It looks like shortbread, but we'll find out soon. (laughs) Update. It is, in fact, a sugar cookie. Not shortbread. Sugar. Very different. Okay. Are we no gonna... less goaty. I hope it doesn't taste like goat. What? It's not a good dessert. Yeah, if this was a wishbone, I would be with <laughs> Yay. All right. Cheersies. Boop. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. Lemony. It's not half bad. It's pretty good. It's not bread pudding. Unlike most Disney cookies, that is not sickly sweet. It's actually just sweet and buttery enough where I would think it was shortbread if I didn't know any better. Yeah, it's crumbly like shortbread. The frosting has a lemon flavor and some sort of citrus that really offsets it. I also think there's almond extract in it. I'm a big fan. It's pretty good sugar cookie. Way to go, goat cookie. I think gingerbread's more seasonal, obviously, but... This is more Disney and niche, and that's what we're all about. Can I have some? Wow. Okay. Last round of rock, paper, scissors for Winter Picks dinner for our at our evening cocktail. Our nightcap. Nightcap. You will. Are you ready? I'm very ready. Are you? I'm ready. Born happen. ready. Yes, you are. Ready? Yeah. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Nice job. Wow. Today was definitely my day. I went four for five on the rock, paper, scissors. Never been so proud. But we are headed back to the monorail to go to our final stop. And I think it's fitting that we end the night at one of my favorite lounges in all of Walt Disney World and at the only monorail resort we haven't been to yet. (laughs) 
And I guess that means you're going to the Grand, which I'm not mad about. The Grand is decorated beautifully for the holidays with a massive Christmas tree down the center and gingerbread house towards the rear of the lobby. It is best known for the most expensive dinner on property in Victoria and Alberts, as well as restaurants like Narcoozies and Citrico's, the Grand Floating Cafe, 1900 Park Fair. You can tell I like eating here, but where are we going? We are going to go, at some point, Oogle the Gingerbread House. I love an Oogle. Oogle the Tree. Love another Oogle. But before that, since they're closing shortly, we're going to Enchanted Rose. Okay, see now, I just can't lose actually here. This is a big win. The Grand Floridian is absolutely stunning this time of year. It's probably the number one resort I recommend you visit. Not only do they have this gargantuan multi-story tree, but they have the life-size gingerbread house. It's so adorable. There's hidden Mickeys all over it. It's got blue and purple touches, iridescence for the 50th right now. It's absolutely amazing. We're going to, again, go look at it after we get our drinks. But we are headed to Enchanted Rose, which we've been before on the channel. It's one of my favorite lounges. It's loosely Beauty and the Beast themed. We've got great cocktails, a great way to end out our multi-course meal. The Enchanted Rose Lounge only opened up a few years ago. It replaced Meisner's, which is more of a cigar gentleman's club feel. Not that kind of gentleman's club, like a classy one, like the kind on the Titanic. You could almost pass for a gentleman. Anyway, it is now Enchanted Rose, which loosely ties into Beauty and the Beast with things like the golden uh, light fixture here that is supposed to mimic Belle's dress. Also in the library room, you have Cogsworth and Mrs. Potts and Lumiere actually on display, as well as the mirror and the rose. Enchanted Rose does have some light bites available. They share a kitchen with Citrico, so they have very good appetizers, and then they have a variety of signature cocktails. Rounding out our delicious five-course meal with our nightcaps here at the Grand Floridian. Alan, tell the people what you're drinking. Gin martini, stirred, not shaken, because that's the right way. No offense, James Bond. Offense, James Bond. It's very dry, meaning they just showed it the bottle of vermouth with some blue cheese olives. And it's incredible. Citrusy, herbaceous, and just enough of the olive juice to make me know they're there. And what did you get? In a shocking twist of events, a turn no one could see coming, I got the holiday old fashioned. No one's surprised. Anyway, this is a cranberry rosemary. So basically, combining the last two together, it's got house made brown sugar simple syrup, cranberry, rosemary, and a little uh, orange in there. Cheers. Now, right off the bat, this one is more rosemary y than the last one because I can smell this a little bit stronger. I will say this one is a little bit sweeter because of that brown sugar syrup, but it also has the most burning on the back end. I like this one quite a bit. If I were to rank the old fashions I had tonight, number one, shocking truly to everyone would be Outer Rim. Number two would be this one, and number three would be Steakhouse 71. But all of them have been delicious, and they've all put me in the holiday season. Spirit, get it? Because out there. I'll see myself out. It's time to oogle at the gingerbread house. Oh, I'm oogling. It is unbelievable. Life-size gingerbread house. I could live in there. I'd probably eat my house, but that would be fine. I hear the plaster is frosting. The plaster is frosting and chocolate. How can you not want that? In reality, this baby is made with over a thousand pounds of honey, 140 pints of egg whites, hundreds of pounds of chocolate and flour and spices. I mean, it is just unfathomable how much stuff it takes to make this gingerbread house every year. A couple details I love to point out. First of all, I, again, love that it's the blues and the purples and the ear adescence for the 50th anniversary. I love that the little wreaths on all the windows are actually little Mickey-eared wreaths. Aww. It's very cute. I love the stained glass-looking windows of different Disney characters throughout the house. And there are also gold-hidden Mickeys that you can look for throughout the gingerbread house. You know what I love? that the gingerbread house has a small gingerbread community that is miniature on its porch. That's a two-story gingerbread mansion. And the neighbors are here for holiday fun. I love it. It's just so cool. And then, of course, also oogling the tree. Oh, I'm oogling. You're oogling hard. 
And you want to know something fun about the Grand Floridian decorations? What's that? The themes. It's themed after the 12 days of Christmas. You can see it here in the tree decorations as well as the wreaths throughout. Yeah, he's got like the five gold rings here, seven pipers piping. I also love these ornaments that are bird cages. They mirror the large bird cages here in the lobby. And a fun fact, some of you may even remember this, there used to be live birds in the lobby of the Grand Floridian. Who had to clean it? Who had to clean the Grand Floridian bird cages? Probably the same poor custodial staff who have to walk behind the mini horses and the headless horsemen in the parades. True heroes of the Disney company. Hey, shout out to you. <sighs> well, we nailed it. We did. I did. You did. I did great. You did wonderful. Thank you. It was a great day. It was a great holiday, monorail, winter fix dinner. What was your favorite course? Steakhouse 71, no yeah. questions asked. That yeah. burger, incredible. Onion rings, phenomenal. Mac and cheese, just okay, but it was still there, and I love mac and cheese. I'm going to actually give mine to... I was going to give it to Outer Rim, and then I remember we ate nudes. So, the, one of those two things. Yep. <laughs> No matter what, checking out the Monorail Resorts and any of the Disney Resorts during the holidays is always really fun. So highly recommend if you're visiting this time of year. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you're new. Hit that notification bell and follow us on all of our socials. It's at Mammoth Club or at Mammoth underscore club. And let us know where we should do Winterfix dinner next. In the meantime, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been magical.